All right, folks, I'm just into turn two. Uh, again, working with Yule's division. They did have uh, the, the initiative went to the Rebels, and he chose Yule to activate first at the top of the turn. Let's focus in a little bit. You can kind of see that things have happened, uh, especially here. You can see there was some shock combat going on, and now let me start over here with uh, Trimble's brigade. Again, Yule's division was first. I started off uh, hesitatingly uh, with Trimble, and basically all I did, since they're all disordered and got problems going on, I, I tried to rally them all, even this unit here. He was successful. It was difficult, and he had a penalty, uh, but he did actually rally uh, this regiment. Uh, it's still out of command, but it is rallied, and it's now facing that direction. And towards his rear is two broken units. Let me take this off for a second. Uh, not really worried about this double stack, honestly. So I turn to face this unit, which is out of command for the Union. Uh, I think it is facing right. I'm not sure if it was like this or if it was straight. I think it was like this. But this unit is... Uh, not disordered, but it is out of command, so I chose to face his rear. Also, Trimble himself joined this stack. There's, there was two disordered units. He rallied one of them, uh, so he does have two regiments now back in uh, control that he can do stuff with. That will take away this ineffective status, uh, I believe, so we'll see when we get there. Uh, so yeah, there was that. That was their activation. Uh, it's worth noting that this unit here, this regiment, can only take one activation this turn because it's out of command and it's part of a combat ineffective brigade. Uh, being combat ineffective, this brigade can only take a maximum of two activations in the turn. Normally, Yule, Yule has three activations, but this brigade can only take a maximum of two because it's combat ineffective. In addition, this regiment, because it's out of command, takes one less than that. Minimum one. You always get at least one activation to do something with. And he just did that. So this regiment is done for the turn. Basically rallied. Uh, but the other two regiments still have one more activation to do. And that'll be their second and last activation. But so far that is their first. Now I went to uh, Forno's brigade. And you'll notice Forno was missing from the action because leading the charge which he was literally doing with this unit here. This unit did not shoot, it moved and shocked. He was with it and he was killed, unfortunately. So the battle at this wood edge was bloody indeed. The unit itself took one hit, which is not bad. And I believe the unit was from Geary's brigade over here. And if you remember the union over here, this line was held by uh, Prince's uh, regiments. I believe Prince was here, and you'll see he's adjacent to this unit. He ended up uh, moving to the closest unit within it under his command, which was here. Uh, he's got two disordered units there, so that's where he is. Uh, currently out of command, even though he's with them, but that will change on the next turn, I believe. We'll check command. Um, so yeah, Forno was killed taking this position. Uh, also, there was a Union unit. Uh, I did consider withdrawing, not withdrawing, but uh, what do they call it? It's part of the shock. It's where you basically retreat your units before the shock is fought. I had that option. I decided not to do with it. Not to do it. Uh, I was just going to hold out. I mean, it was do or die. You know, I'd rather go down fighting than falling back a hex. So I kept them there. Uh, one of the units in the Union here did manage to do some reaction fire to the pre, pre-shock pre fire, I guess it was called, I can't remember. Uh, did a little bit of damage, but nothing major. Uh, yeah, one of the units was routed from pre-shock cohesion test. It just, you know, here come the rebels, they just, you know, got pretty scared and ran away. That was it. So that one unit was gone. I think it was the unit that was here. And both these units were attacking it. Uh, and this unit advanced into his, the vacated hex. And due to stacking limitations, this unit could not enter. He could not advance. There's 12 here, minus whatever hits he took. One. So he's at 11. 
So I believe I did that right. So that was that situation. Uh, this unit was up here. It fought. Uh, he ended up retreating. The unit he was fighting routed, which I thought it was a strange result. One routes, one retreats. Uh, but I didn't see in the rules where this unit that routed, the Union unit, prevented his retreat. So I guess that's right. Um, that was the result of shock combat. They actually fought. I think it was two to one odds uh, for the uh, rebels. And they didn't get the charging bonus and so on and so forth. But that's the result that came out. And there it is. Uh, what other combat was there? There wasn't one here. I don't think there was. But there was what this one here with Forno. Advanced into the, fought in this against the unit that was here in the woods, so he's penalized. But he managed to win, but it cost him his life. Forno is gone. And he will be replaced, I believe, in the replacement phase. Uh, I haven't gotten there yet, but all of his brigade, all these units here, are now out of command. And that's my little reminder there. I put it in the middle. They remain under attack orders and will not be able to change yet. They need a new commander. And let's see. Yeah, that's the situation here. So it's they took the position, got a nice hole built up in here. I don't I don't know if the union's gonna be able to come out of this. And if they follow up quickly enough, that could seal the fate of the union. So it's up to Geary here and his brigade. He's got three regiments left, they're still fresh, uh, to do something about this. And where was he? Prince, like I said, was here because he was adjacent to this unit. He ended up moving to get out of there to go to his units that are still on the table, which is here. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be the situation there. He still has three units on the table, Prince. So we'll see what he can do. But it's very interesting, I have to say. So he still has two more activations with this brigade. No, actually, I'm wrong. It's, it would be one more, because if he's out of command, uh, well, there's no brigadier. I'm, I'm going to look this up, because the brigadier's gone. So who does the divisional commander trace his uh, command range to? But maybe it's irrelevant, because there is a phase where I can replace the commander. So anyway, that's that. Uh, next up is going to be Early's Brigade right here, still part of Yule's division, and it's looking pretty fresh <laughs> hanging back there like that. In fact, the Rebels are playing really smart, seeing what develops, keep their strength held back until the right moment, and it's closing in on the moment of decision, if you ask me. Uh, I might just throw them forward and attack Geary's Brigade. Uh, we'll see. But these guys are up next for Yule's activation. So there you go. I thought I'd throw this up there. This is another video for you guys to enjoy and learn about this game as I learn it. I know I made a mistake or two in this combat. One was a stupid mistake. I, I would think I was fighting this combat up here. And for some reason, I I was thinking of this combat. And I, I added a penalty to the attacker because of woods. And there is no woods up here open terrain. I was thinking of this combat here. I'm pretty sure I did that, but that's okay. I can't go back now. It wouldn't have made any difference whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, we'll see what's going to happen next. Folks, it's a really enjoyable game. Great experience. If you love American Civil War history, uh, this is a great game to check out. I mean, it really feels like an actual battle. Now, granted, it's not light in the rules department. It's not overwhelmingly heavy either. I mean, this isn't ASL, far from it. But it, I find it very enjoyable, even with the, the details and just learning the game. I'm really getting pulled in. It's very enjoyable. Um, we'll see what happens after this practice battle. Maybe I'll give a... I'm, I'm not, I really can't give a review yet. I have to actually play the full scenario. Uh, but these are my observations anyway so far. So when I finish this up, and again, it could end pretty quick. Uh, Union is not looking good. Uh, we'll see what happens. Then I'm going to jump into the Cedar Mountain scenario. Uh, okay, folks, I hope you enjoyed. Hang in there. It's only going to get better. Well, not better for the Union, but we'll see because you never know. Take care, folks.